Welcome back to the shed. The bore inside the cylinder isn't as smooth as I'd like it to be, so I've made this lapping stick from a piece of hardwood from an old curtain pole, which was turned down in the lathe to suit the 15mm cylinder bore. This was then cut down the centre on my bandsaw, and a piece of copper plumbing pipe fitted to the end as a ferrule to hold the end secure when mounted back in the lathe. Some ridges were cut into the surface with a hacksaw to retain the cutting paste when in use. The cylinder is an easy slide fit on the lap, so the slit is used to expand the lap by opening it up and inserting some strips of cardboard into the slot so that the cylinder now has some resistance against the wood. I use the fine valve type grinding paste to begin with, which is about 5 micron or 220 grit equivalent. I smear some of the paste onto the lap and a towel is used to cover the slide rays of the lathe to prevent contamination. And the cylinder is held gently and slid up and down the lap to finely grind away the imperfections caused when the bore was turned. It's important to keep the cylinder moving so that the lapping is even along the bore. After a while the lap is wiped down and a finer compound is used to hone the surface even smoother using this 0.3 micron strop paste. With time and patience, an almost mirror finish can be achieved, and this will help the engine to run nice and smooth. We now need to make a piston to fit the finished cylinder. A length of brass is faced and roughed out to close diameter and then very fine cuts are made to creep up on the desired piston size, using the cylinder bore as a guide and being extra careful not to go too far. A drop of oil is then added to the work and regular test fits are made until the cylinder will slide onto the piston without binding, but also without any discernible shake in the fit. A good test of the fit is to cover the air holes and hopefully you'll get a nice suction pop sound as you slide the cylinder off. This can now be blued and marked out according to the drawing dimensions and scribed using a pair of odd leg calipers. The recess is then turned into the piston to the scribe lines using a carbide V-tool 
and the central hole for the conrod can now be drilled prior to tapping. Now it may be difficult to find a tap long enough to thread right through, so the depth of the thread can be reduced and the conrod modified to suit later on. This is then carefully tapped out to M4. The final scribe line is then used to set the length of the piston and I use the parting blade just to turn a portion of the piston away. Then the edges can be cleaned up with a scotch pad and a small file before fully parting off to the finished size. This is then cleaned up on the bench and tested with the cylinder. The fit needs to allow the piston to move unrestricted within the bore whilst not allowing any air to escape around the sides. Now this isn't as easy as it sounds and full disclosure here, this was my second attempt as I overshot the dimension on my first try resulting in a sloppy piston. But I'm no stranger to failed attempts and I have a drawer full of bits that just didn't quite work out the way I wanted. I call this my drawer of shame. Everyone should have one. Next up is the crank connector and this can be made from mild steel or brass. The drawing dimensions were first marked up on a bar of 10 by 10 steel and then taken to the drill for drilling and reaming the hole for the crank pin. Now I'm not a big fan of reaming small holes in steel stock, but luckily this reamer lived to see another day. The hole was checked to be a running fit with a 4mm pin and then mounted in the four jaw chuck and clocked up so that it was concentric. The four corners of the stock were turned away with a high speed steel cutter and then the boss was turned to dimension using my usual carbide tooling.
Chamfers were then turned on the outer edges and also a chamfer was cut at the back of the connector prior to parting off. The tapping hole for the conrod could now be drilled and tapped to M4. And then finally, the parting tool was used to cut the finished component off the steel bar stock. A hand reamer was then used to clean up any burrs inside the hole. The next job is to make the brass cylinder cover, which needs to be a press fit into the top of the cylinder. The 3mm recess was turned until it was about one thou oversize, and this was double checked with the cylinder block. Here I was looking for a nearly fit but not quite fit dimension. Taste so close. The chamfer was then turned and the cap parted off to close dimension. The parted side now just needs refacing to clean up the surface finish. So that's three more components made and ticked off the list and I'll be back soon with the next instalment of the Wigwag engine build. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you again in part six. Thanks for watching. <laughs>